This is the image we're going to be working with today and I want to create more depth in here and add a little bit more atmosphere up here. So we are going to be working between Lightroom and Photoshop for this one. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to balance the image slightly and you can see that we have quite a bit of latitude for this. But I'm going to take the exposure back just ever so slightly, bring some contrast in, take the highlights back just to round about there. Shadows, let's lift them slightly. Whites, not too much. Texture, very slightly with this. And tiny bit of clarity. Dehaze, I'm going to take back the way slightly because I'm going to work with the slight haze that's up here, but I'm going to add it later so that we don't bring too much in. Let me raise the shadows a tiny bit again. And you can see there's a tiny bit of clipping in there, but not too much. Very negligible for the entire image. So I'll turn that off. There's no highlight clipping, so I can push the highlights even further at the moment if I want. Color-wise, I am going to get into the color mixer. The greens, I'm going to take them there. And I'm going to shift the saturation slightly, just very slightly with this. A minus five luminance. I might play around with there. A uh, hue shift, I am fine with that. I could warm them up slightly if I want, take them back to there. This is entirely up to you when you work with any of your own colors within an image. Everything there looks okay for me and it's a good starting point for this. So straight away, I'm going to jump into the masks. And because it is a landscape, it reads the image as a landscape. So let's see what masks it creates. And it has mountains, which is not water, which I will take. Natural ground. So I'm only going to take the water for this one. We'll work with the rest of it. So because the water is really the, the main character, shall we say, in this, let's just play around with the water. And it is quite detailed as it is, but I am going to adjust the texture in it, which will affect everything within the water and if I do that you'll see what I mean so that you know that it, there is a slight effect happening on it and it's not moving this too much dehaze we can do that we can add more in it is entirely up to you I'm going to draw it over that way slightly the next mask we are going to create is we are going to work in here and work with some atmosphere so let's go in and Let's try the linear gradient because this is the first edit of this image. So let's see just exactly what it does. Texture, I am going to draw back slightly. Clarity, if I take it back, you'll see what happens there. So I'm going to take that back slightly again. Dehaze, and then I'm going to punch some contrast into it. Not too much, but just enough. So if we have a look at that mask, if I bring that mask on, you can see that it only comes to there. I'm going to take that a bit further. And then I'm going to subtract some areas and mainly this area here. So I'm going to begin to subtract. I'm going to take object, ensure it's on the marquee and select. Let's go about there. So that releases that. And if I turn this on and off, you'll see that we have this. What I'm going to do is I don't, I want some contrast in here. So what I'm going to do is I am going to zoom in ever so slightly and let's go for 25%, perhaps even more. Let's go for 33, that's it. That's a better working one for me. And then I'm going to subtract, this time using the brush. And I'm going to draw the brush back slightly with the flow and the density. I'll leave the feather. Let's take the feather down slightly as well, just about there. And then I am simply going to do that. Now let's turn this off and just see how it looks. So we have that, let's turn the mask on and off. And we have quite a hard edge there, although it is there. So I'm going to add, again using the brush, and I'm going to keep it at the same. And I'm just going to paint in there slightly. 
there. So you can see now that we have that zoom back out to fit. Everything looks nice. So the next mask we are going to create this time is a radial gradient. And I'm going to drag that to there. Rotate it slightly. Bring it over. Just to about there. And then again, I'm going to lift the exposure slightly. Perhaps to about there. Contrast again slightly. Highlights, if I take them back, you'll see that we begin to give more in here and we can see more detail. And I'm going to warm this one up slightly. Just about there. I don't want the atmosphere overpowering the image so i'm quite happy with everything that is sitting there so with this we're going to add a few more edits and then take it into photoshop so the next one that we are going to add is a radial gradient and this is to provide us i'm going to zoom out to do this one this is to provide you with a working depth now this is normally added at the end and as you'll see here, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to invert the radial gradient. So if I show you where it's affecting, you can see it's just around there. Normally you would add this at the end, but for this instance, because I want your eyes drawn in, and because of what we're going to do next, I would like to see it just now. So I'm going to turn the exposure down. Again with the brush at its previous settings. I'm just going to click once in there, once in there, because although we have created a vignette I don't want it to interfere with the work that we've just done with this so add one more and this time it's a linear gradient and we're going to take that linear gradient just in here and instead of adjusting the exposure at the moment we're going to adjust the clarity just so that these pop slightly so you're creating a type of vignette using what's in the actual image itself if i do that you'll notice that it's quite harsh there as well dehaze just about there and that looks okay for what we're about to do I'll just bring that up to fit the screen so let's go back into the edit module so we're now going to take this image into photoshop and adjust a couple of more elements and show you a couple of things that we can do down here Right click in the image, edit in Photoshop. Now that we're in Photoshop, I'm going to show you a couple of the edits that we are going to do with this. And most of it is going to be dodging and burning, so I will speed up some elements once I've shown you the process that I am working with. So the first thing I'm going to do with this, make a copy of the background. From here, I'll just color that red. Now, I'm going to work with the Pro Panel here because we've got tools, filters, effects, and finish. I'll put a link to the Pro Panel. I really like this panel when it comes to editing, so that's the one I lean towards 99% of the time because it does a lot of the heavy lifting for you and allows you just to get on with your edit. For example, already programmed in as a dodge and burn layer. That's it set up. And you can see here with the background and foreground, the colours are already there. So what I'm going to do with this dodge and burn is I'm going to work with the lights first and then the darks. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a brush. I'm going to ensure that the brush hardness is down at zero. The size of the brush itself, I can adjust with the square brackets on the keys. So I'm going to take them down. I'm going to take the opacity of the brush down to about 10, roughly around 10. And I'm going to drop the flow back just to around 59. The blend mode for the dodging, I am going to turn to screen. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in and work with the light that's already there. Now, I'm not going to work in really close because then I will lose what's happening with the entire image. So perhaps you'll notice that it zooms in and out when I am doing this. And that's the reason because I'll speed this next part up for you. So on this dodge and burn layer, which is the first one, we're going to work with the greens. And instead of simply just dodging and burning, I'm going to use a color to do it. So I'm going to hover over. B in the brush selected. I'm going to hover over a lighter color and I may actually go up and draw it from up here. 
So the colour that I'm going to be dodging and burning in is the lighter green up here. So that's the lighter greens dodged. I'm now going to go in and create a new dodge and burn layer and burn the darker greens using the same process, except I'm going to change the screen blend mode to normal and I'm going to draw back the flow. So this is subtle and we'll see the effect afterwards. So using the pro panel, dodge and burn layer, So I'm quite happy with that and the final dodge and burn is just to emphasise these rocks so it's already created for me with the pro panel so I'm simply this time just going to work with the white and I am going to make it a screen blend as well. So that's that one finished. I'm not going for a heavy edit here. So let me show you the difference with all of the dodge and burn layers turned off. So if I select the top one, select that one, the bottom one, put them in a group and turn that on and off. So you can see the extra depth that's created in there. It's not too overpowering, but it's enough to give more of a 3D feel to the image. Quite happy with that as well. So with the top layer selected, Shift, Control, Alt and E or Shift, Command, Alt and E and we have this image here. And again, I'm only showing you my workflow so I am going to go into the Orton effect, click OK, click OK. I don't want to change any of the settings on it. I'm quite happy with the settings that it has. Within the image, I'm going to jump to the tools. So I'm now going to choose a luminosity mask because I need the autumn effect applied to the highlights, not in the shadows. There's no light in the shadows, so it can't create the autumn effect in there. So if I go to one in here, you can see that that's nearly the entire image. Everything in white is the luminosity mask. That's too much for me for this image. Two, most of the time for me, is okay with this. I'm then going to apply the mask to this mask here. Apply mask. And you can see that it's applied it to all the lighter areas. If I turn it on and off, it should be subtle, but at least it's there. So that's me. I'm quite happy with how this image has turned out. And let's just experiment. So I'm just going to add the flare that was in last week's video. I take that up to the top, just up there. It looks terrible at the moment. Go in to the group, go into the saturation. Let's turn the saturation back. Not too far, I don't want the white, I think. Let's just leave it at a slight warmth. And let's go in and control and T, which is transform. Let's just drag it out there. Bring it down, does it look nice there? Is it too much for the image? Does it work better here? Or over here? Now this is where you can go wild and you can continue to edit and refine and refine it until you get it to where you want it. I am unsure whether this holds up in this image. So I'm going to draw it back slightly and then flick it on and off. And it does. I'm going to take it up a bit further though. So that I've got more contrast in here. So that holds, for me, that holds within this image. Perhaps move it slightly. And this is when you could be moving it about. So I won't waste your time with that. I mentioned that when we come into Photoshop, there's a couple of things you can do with the water. And this is just a technique to show you, just in case you've got any areas where you think, well, I don't want this darker area in here and perhaps I don't want that one perhaps I don't want this one so do it the simplest of ways shift control alt and e blend all the layers below up into one I'm going to zoom into a certain area and what I'm going to do is I'm want to cover this up but I, I want the contrast there but not as contrasty as it is 
So what I can do is, that area is about that size. What I can do is look for a similar area. Let's go for that. With some detail in it. And I am going to do that. And that was using the lasso tool. And I'm going to copy and paste it up onto the next layer. So that's Control or Command C, V, or simply Command or Control and J, because it's a selection. I'm now going to move it across to there. Now it looks terrible. So what we can do is we can turn down the opacity and then it doesn't look just as bad. But again, you have these lines going around it. So of course we are going to mask this. And that creates a reveal all mask. And then we take the brush. And in this case, I can start to blend these out. And it will take a while because I've only got that set at 10 and the flow 60. So you begin to see an effect now. So if we change it from screen, go back to normal. And I start to paint out gently. Always follow the direction of the water. So here, hopefully you can see that line. So if I just start to take it out, follow the direction of the flow. Every time you do something like this, if it's rocks, follow the direction of the rocks. And then your eye won't be drawn to it. So if I zoom out, you'll see that it's still there, but it's not as contrasty. And if I turn this on and off, that's one tip to allow you to blend this in so you get the idea of how to do that using masks i'm going to speed up the video but i'm going to fill in these two areas as well just to see what they're like so there we have it here's the before and the after hopefully you got something from this tutorial thanks again for watching Take care and I'll see you in the next video.